Hello and welcome to part two in chapter two of our fire team series. In the last episode we worked on the main menu system for our game and we're now going to be working on the play screens main menu for hosting, joining and finding matches. So we're going to set up our game instance to allow us to do so and as well our menu interface. So let's jump in. Okay, so with the main menu done, we need to work on getting that hooking up our play game options such as quick game, host game and find game. So that is achieved via the game instance. So we're going to create an overall class here called the game instance. And if you don't know what a game instance is, it's essentially the very first actor that gets spawned in when the game loads. So it's a very good thing to initiate stuff on. And another bonus of it is that it's persistent. So if you have something set up on it, you can always access it. So in this case, we're going to call this one uh, my game instance. And we go inside of here. And we're going to set up some basic events in here to handle the different sessions we need to do. So we're going to create a custom event for uh, quick match. And Another custom event for host match and thirdly a custom event for find match. So let's do host match first. So host match is pretty simple. You can just drag out here and type in the word session. And when you do this, you'll see the option for create session. Click on this and it's going to ask for the player controller, how many people to connect and whether or not it's using LAN or not. So the player controller, pretty simple, just do get player controller. And then public connections, we're going to do eight. And we're not going to worry about using LAN for now, we'll leave that off. But if you do want to add LAN as an option, you can make LAN an input on this host match. Then when you call it, you can turn on LAN or off. So that'll be when you create a session and on success here is when we tell the game to go into another level in which case the lobby menu so on success here we're going to do uh open level by object reference and we're going to choose the lobby menu and you want to expand open because we need to tell that it's going to now be a listener so if we just put in the options here question mark listen and that's it for listen out for other players connecting Okay, and hit compile there. Next, we want to go to find match. So find match, you know, drag out, type in the word session, and you'll find find sessions. Again, it's going to ask you for a player controller. So get player controller. Uh, max results. So how many matches can it find in maximum? Let's say 10. And whether or not you're looking at LAN or not. And when it's found them, you'll get an array of uh, sessions. And when we've done that, we want to report back those sessions. So let's go on to the um, uh, let's actually make this event dispatcher and do sessions on sessions found. And you make an input for this to match this input here. So if you want to make a oh, go into inputs, add input and search for the type for session. And you'll see blueprint session result. Change that to an array and name it sessions. And you will compile and then drag that out. Do call. Now go into the on success and report back the success uh, results. And we then somewhere else can determine what that happens with that stuff there. Then we've got quick match. Now quick match is a combination of both of these. So you're going to find what matches you can. And if it's unsuccessful, then it'll make its own one. So we're going to take the find sessions, copy this, bring that in. And rather than call sessions found, because we're not going to display them or anything, we're just going to send a player to the first one. We're going to get the results and do get a copy. You get the first result. The first result is the one that's closest to you. So it's the one with the shortest ping. So that's the one you ideally want to use. So you find that one, get that result, and then you do 
a join session on this one. So, yeah, and do join session on success. Back to controller, get player controller. Pretty simple, okay. Then on failure, we want it to host a game instead. So we're going to drag that down and do host match. So if it fails to find any sessions, it will just send you to the host match window instead. Okay. Um, yeah, those are our various setups here for our game instance. Now to use a game instance, you do need to set it in your project settings. So go to the project settings and go to maps and modes. It's right at the bottom here, game instance class change it to my game instance okay so now we've got those in there we now need to hook them up to our ui so let's go to our menu folder go to menu ui let's go to the menu uh play screen so for each button here we're going to go to quick match and go to the on clicked event and this button here let's actually rename it to button underscore quick match do more while over here um button host match and finally button find match uh yeah so on the quick match one here you're going to do get game instance and then cast to my game instance plug that in and then in this case it's a quick match so we're just going to call quick match and now we're going to do it for each one so host copy this and then call out host match And finally, find match. Do find match. Okay. I'll save that. Okay, so that's those bits done set up on the play screen. Um, now, if you want to make it so they are a bit more animated when you hover over them, we're going to go ahead and do that. So for each one here, we're going to go and add an animation. So click new animation, and this will be a button hover anim. And go to the timeline at the bottom and we click on the animation and we do new track. And you want to choose the button quick match in this one. And in fact, actually, let's just do that as quick match. Um, <clears throat> so on this button here we're going to add track and we're going to do a transform the uh, text inside of it so click on text add track text and we're going to change the render transform so transform and the scale of it so add a key by clicking a little button in the middle and then move the playhead along to something short like 0 0.25 or 0 0.5 we'll, we'll do 0.25 and on the scale here, we're going to scale it to 1.25. And do it for X and Y. Okay. Um, we're also going to change its color. So we're going to go to the text here, add track, and do color and opacity. And we're going to add a key at start here. So it's white. And then by the time we get to the end, we're going to change it to be yellow. So if we just zoom in on this. And then on the end here, make sure you're at the end. Uh, we can go to color opacity and just choose what color we want it to be. So I'll make mine an orangey color. I'm going to make this the orange that's sort of matching the theme of the whole game. So I'll just drag that and put that in there. Okay. So our color will change. Oh, whoops, I forgot to actually set it. Click on there. 
and then click the little plus button right here and it will set it. And you should see this like white bar change to a gradient. That's it fading in to yellow. Okay. And that'll do. So we're gonna do it for each one. So for this, we're gonna go to uh, duplicate this one here. And this will be for the host button. And the difference with this one is that we want to change what text blocks being used here. So we're going to go select the host one and you're going to right click on it and you will do replace with text block. And now now work with this one. Okay. So all the stuff's in here still the way you think it would be. So that now works for host match. Now I'm going to duplicate that one again. And it's be for find. And we're just going to change the text block here. So select the text again up here that you want to change. Right click on the text block and do replace with text block. As long as it's the same type, all the animation that you've done here will transfer over. So you can see that one. So now. Okay. Next we're going to click on each button. And we're going to go down to the hover and unhovered events. So let's go on the hovered and we'll just put that over here. And we're going to look for our animations over here on the left hand side. You'll find in here quick match. And we want to tell this one to play animation forward. And we want to do now unhovered. So find button quick match, do unhovered. And we'll play the same animation, but this time you want to play the animation in reverse. Okay, you want to do the same thing for the other two buttons here. So we're going to, we, again, to recap, we go to host match, click on hovered. Uh, keep it all in line. And we're going to do the host animation. Play forward. Unhovered, play in reverse. Now see if you can make the third one for the find match. Okay, so see if you can make up the third one, which is find match. Okay, and when we're done here, we're going to hit compile and save that. So if we go back and push play now, you can hover over each button and you'll see that they all light up. Excellent. And if I go to host match, it'll take me over to a different level. In this case, the lobby menu. So that's what we do work on next time. Okay, and there we have it. We've now got the ability to click a button and go into a lobby menu. However, the lobby menu is completely sparse. We haven't done anything to it. So let's get started on the next episode on setting up our lobby menu UI. So you can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. You can catch all my videos early from just $1 a month. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribed and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone. I'm ready to play now. Put me in the game now. Came here to prove it, I'm ready to do it, I can't be afraid now Put me on the stage now, I'm ready to rage now I feel like an animal stuck in a cage and I'm ready to break out My time, my time, none of you people can tell me to stop This time, like the last time